こんにちは、すてき。Welcome back to another cool and fun episode of the Stick with Kaji podcast. I'm Luann. I'm Sean. And you can follow me on Instagram here, where you know, I show you guys what I do when I'm not recording podcasts or making videos. So, yeah, and if you like this video, Video at the end, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe for more fun content. We are the parents of Ryan, Emma, and Kate from Ryan's World. So, in this channel, we talk about just the behind the scenes stuff and pretty much just our life and pretty much whatever we want. You know, there's not And a lot of times in the main videos that we showcase on Ryan's World, we just show all the fun stuff. But on this one, we want to connect with the parents of those kids and show the,、uh, the behind the scene what's really happening、uh, off the camera. On this episode, we're going to explain about this recent video that we, rece-、uh, we released about us traveling to Japan. That's right, the secret ninja. <laughs> <laughs> the secret、uh, ninja project. That's a fidget spinner. Yeah, I couldn't find a shuriken、um, on. Yeah. yeah, it does look closer. So, yeah. Okay,、right? yeah. It does look like a shuriken a little bit. <laughs> so, we traveled to Japan two years ago, and it's funny that we're releasing it now because、um, this is something that we're working with the、uh, department of the、uh, tourism in Japan. So,、uh, we've been coordinating with them, and we actually went back to Japan two years ago and filmed all this footage, but we released this year because of the COVID. So, right when we went、uh, to Japan, it was 20, December 2020. At that time, the pandemic wasn't there. So we were able to still travel to Japan. It was, everything was safe. And we went to all these amazing places. And we'll talk in detail later. But、uh, you know, we were going to release it right away after that. But then, after we came back to the、uh, US and the COVID started spreading around the world, and then you know, the tourism itself wasn't really ideal after that point. So, we couldn't really release this video for years. And you guys have noticed Ryan looked really young in those videos. He was eight, so it was two years ago. So, yeah, it's funny how、huh? only two years, but he looks so different. Yeah.、Uh, but that's the kind of the, the explanation why that there's a time gap between when we filmed and when we released. Right. So, I remember being in Japan in December. And I start hearing on the news and stuff about COVID. And, you know, I was like, what's that? You know, I wasn't sure. But I thought, oh, I'll pass. By the time you come back home, it'll be over. We can release our cool. No, this is not ninja. How do you do ninja pose? I, I, there's no really specific okay, pose. Right? Release... But yeah, a lot of people do this, okay, our, right? Yeah, we can release our cool ninja videos, you know, and share with you guys. All, everything that we did there, like the culture, culture, the, history, and、yeah. all the,、yeah, the fun tourist places that we've been to.、Uh, a lot of them associate with the ninja history. So I, think, I thought it was pretty cool. But yeah, we waited until now to release it. But it's finally out. I'll do a lot of videos.、Uh, I don't know how many videos、uh, being published by the time we release this video, but. I feel like there are like 10 videos worth of the footages that we recorded there. So I'm so excited to release them all. Right. And we were really excited because, you know, Ryan's half Japanese. Yeah, because a lot of those places, it's a really fun place to go. But then it's a little bit difficult for foreigners to, to find the way to, to access there, right?、Uh, it's not really near Tokyo, which, you know, a lot of people, when foreigners come to Japan, tourists come to Japan, they go to Tokyo and then just visit the,、uh, the cities around. Tokyo, these places is a little bit away from that, so you really have to know the, how to get to those places. And you know, since we were working with the,、uh, the team in Japan,、um, uh, taking us to those places, so you know, it was fun. A lot of places I've never been to, even I'm from Japan. I didn't, I've never been to those places, so I was like, pretty excited too. Yeah, because they gave us a tour guide who, when we went there, they explained. Everything we need to know about that certain location or place. So, if we were to go there ourselves, I wouldn't be able to pick out all these unique spots, you know, without the tour guide there. 
yeah, I'm glad the tour guide could speak in English too. Because I, if I have to explain everything, it, it's going to be hard. Because you have to explain history a bit too. Yeah. And I have to think about oh, how do I translate this and this. Uh, so it was a little bit uh, very, it was really helpful having the, uh, the tour guide who speaks English and explaining that to Ryan and Loanne. Yeah. All right. Anyway. Finally, after this super long intro. Oh, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> anyway, we're going to jump on to the uh, just explaining from the beginning, right? The day one. Yeah, the Ninja Project is supported by Japanese government and also Department of Tourism. They wanted to explain and, and showcase all the fun places associated with the Ninja culture and the history in Japan. A lot of times, you know, uh, tourists uh, come to Japan and they just uh, tour around the uh, Tokyo and the uh, surrounding cities. But there are many fun places in the south side of Japan. So uh, this time we uh, flew to Osaka, Japan, instead of Tokyo. And through this ninja project, actually Ryan was assigned as a ninja, official ninja ambassador. So what it means is Ryan is an official person who helps support ninja culture and history. Uh, not in J not only Japan, but also around the world. So Ryan has a wide, uh, uh, broad of a um, fan base around the world. So he, you know, through the video, he's trying to uh, promote the the culture and the history of ninja. So that's why we went to the uh, uh, Japan and, and uh, visited all these places. And, uh, and as a whole family, we, it was really fun. Not only as a project, but also as a fun family trip too. I don't know if how many people know about this, but there are two famous uh, ninja clan in Japan. Uh, one is Koga and the other one is Iga. And they have different originated city very nearby, but um, a separate they, city. Are they rivals of each other? Yeah, they're very oh. rivals. Right? So it was really fun because we were able to visit both historical places, uh, but they are kind of uh, rival clan uh, against each other. And uh, yeah, when you learn Japanese history, nin uh, Koga and Iga ninja clans, they often appear in the, uh, Japanese history. So it's really fun. If you know the Japanese history, it's really fun to visit those places. Uh, so day one, so we flew from Houston all the way to Tokyo first. And then from Tokyo, we flew right away to Osaka. It was a very long trip on the plane, like over 14 hours, but it was worth it. <laughs> Right, and then, you know, we've been to Osaka before, but all we did in Osaka back then was just going to Universal Studio Japan, and that was it. But this time, we were able to go all the other fun places. Yeah, because before, when we went to Japan the first time with Ryan, he was young. He was probably five or six years old. So for a five to six-year-old to walk around or care about the temple, you know, he wasn't really interested. He just wanted to do some fun kids' places, right? Like Universal, Legoland. Now, when we went back the second time, he's eight. So he's more interested in, in, in aware of his surroundings. So we thought this is a perfect time and opportunity to take him to Japan, to show him the ninja culture and histories. Except it was really sad we didn't get to release it. But I'm so glad we can finally talk about it and finally showcase and share with you guys our experience there. Yeah, it was perfect timing. Like him being eight years old, yeah. we were able to do a lot more stuff than before. Uh, the first stop you know, after we arrived at Osaka was the uh, Ninja Knife Craftman Shop. And it was really cool because this is this Craftman Shop, they, they craft uh, n Japanese knife over generations. Um, and uh, it started, I don't know, how, how, I forgot how many years ago, but I think close to 100 years ago. Um, but they've been providing the uh, custom-made Japanese knife to all these chefs who are working at the uh, famous Japanese restaurants. And sometimes their client is an uh, overseas client, so they're uh, chefs from the uh, outside of Japan. They come to Japan and come to this craft shop and, and request this special made knife. So, so these are custom knives yeah. specifically for the chef that in question, right? Right, and then they can talk to the craftsman. Hey, I will, I'm looking for this specific knife. Can you make something like that? And so they can, he can special make it for those uh, requests. So we actually went to this craftsman shop, and it was really cool. Not only were we looking at the knives on the shelf, but we were also going to his shop, uh, uh, go go to his uh, actually scene where he craft the knife. So we saw him grabbing the piece of just iron 
or metal. I don't know what kind of metal it is. And then he starts uh, sticking the uh, uh, into the cauldron in a fire. Yeah. And then once it's heated up, right. he's just hitting it with a hammer or a machine to do to smash it into flatten it again and fold it in half and then flatten it again. But looking at that process was really interesting because uh, crafting a knife and crafting a sword is essentially very similar. Mm. It's the same process, except it's one is really long and big right. and knife is short, but essentially both of them are blades. It's the same process of building it. Just flattening the iron, folding it in half and flattening it again. And it's a long process. I think he said he has to do it over and over uh, multiple times to make the, uh, to, every time he hits the iron, it disperses the uh, unnecessary materials out of the iron. So it may be becomes more and more right. pure. Um, so we were like looking, watching him doing that process. It was really hot, even watching from oh, yeah. distance. It was really cool just to know that it is a skill set, right? That is passed from generations. So it's not, he just didn't learn it, you know, years ago, right? This is passed on from his great, 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 great grandfather to his great, great grandfather and all the way to him. So I, it's really cool to see something that, you know, that started in the family and still continue to this day. Yeah, and I, when we talked to the owner, he mentioned it before they started working on a knife, they were working on swords. And he still does in a smaller scale, but uh, it was interesting the, uh, that he transformed the, the sword, uh, Japanese sword craft shop into the knife. And it's, it's, uh, he still does the sword, and then, you know, he showed us the, uh, um, some of the sword that he crafted too, and it was really cool seeing uh, the masterpiece he created. Um, and it was really funny because uh, he had two dollars uh, at the shop, and, uh, and they were uh, his whole family was welcoming us as we uh, arrived at the uh, the shop. And uh, those two girls, they were talking to Ryan in English. I think they just learned the greetings yeah. in, in English, and it was cute that they're trying to talk to Ryan in English. And Ryan had a really fun time. He, you know, it's just a really cool magical experience just to see somebody craft a knife in person you know and at the end um he gave us one of the uh, special uh knife to us and they engraved ryan's name on the knife so we took that home back in the u.s and now we're using it every time we cook yay thank you yeah it does work so well i can definitely tell you know the, the knife does make a difference when yes, you cut stuff yeah. yeah i love cutting the, uh, the um, sashimi with that knife so thank you so much for giving us that knife. Uh, the next destination we went from there was the tallest building of Japan. Abenoha Harukasu is the name of the tallest building. What did you think of that building? It was two years ago, so <laughs> I have to like refresh yeah. my memory. It's been a while. So if, I, if it seems like I'm asking Sean a lot of question, it's because I, I don't have good memory and I forget. It might seem as if like, weren't you there? I was there, it's just been a while. <laughs> yeah, so we took the elevator. The elevator itself that took us to, I don't know how many floors, but almost to the top. And the elevator itself experience was really fun because elevator was kind of see-through and the, uh, we were able to see the outside. And also as we go on each floor, they have a different lighting design. So uh, we were able to see a light ups as we go up on the uh, uh, the levels. So we were kind of enjoying that experience too. And as we go to the uh, top floors, um, they had the restaurants and, um, you know, normally we were not able to access the rooftop, but um, they allow us to go on the rooftop and it was like a heliport. And we were able to see the entire city of Osaka from there. It was a little bit scary. Yeah, Sean was saying, oh, I don't want to go there. <laughs> but, you know, Ryan was like, come on, daddy, let's go. <laughs> they even have this activity where they, uh, you know, of course, they put the harness on you and, yeah. and tie you into the, uh, um, the beam. But you were able to walk on the edge of the building. Oh, I don't think I can do that. And did even, they offer that to us too? Yeah, we said, nah, we're good. Yeah, we're good. Oh, <laughs> no, Ryan's too young. Oh, how about Ryan's dad do it? I was like, no, I'm old enough, but I don't want to do that either. Just in case you guys don't know, I'm, I have a scared of height, so. Yes, he doesn't even like balcony. When we go to hotels and stuff, he just like, 
I wouldn't say freak out. That's just too strong of a word. More, more like stay away from the balcony area. Region. I don't want to even watch my yeah. kids going to balcony, <laughs> yeah. so I just do the air shot yeah. on the, hey, uh, the balcony. Better safe than sorry. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that was fun, and then from there we went to the uh, this escape room with the ninja theme. Ninja Mansion. Yeah. So we once you go in, there's full of uh, like secrets and the hints and the mystery you have to solve in, in order for you to go onto the next room. And there's like two ninjas, like a red ninja and black ninja, helping us guide through going uh, solving the mystery. And I was doing pretty good. Yeah, there were places because you have you know it's a secret room, so you have to know where all the hidden doors are at. And then you might look like a regular poster, but behind the poster there's something that you need. Like mm -hmm. it's. And then we have to solve clues and puzzles. It was really fun. There's like a hidden sword underneath the floor. Yeah. Uh, but we were, yeah, we were able to, to get out of the room. And um, after that, Ryan was able to practice throwing uh, shuriken stars with uh, ninjas. It was really fun because uh, all the city off shows of uh, Osaka also visited us yeah. too, like, like watching us uh, completing the escape room tasks. So that was also, I think Ryan enjoyed that the most among, uh, among all the other things of that day. And from there, we took a train and went to this temple that we spent the night of. It's really interesting. They offer to let you stay, uh, spend the night there and experience the life of monks. It's called Ichijoji Temple. And uh, yeah, right when we come in, we were greeted by monks outside the door and we had to leave our shoes outside when we enter. Mm -hmm. And then the dinner, they, the dinner they serve, it's a, a vegan food because the monks, don't, they don't eat meat. So that's also the, the same uh, like a food for us. We're eating exact same food as the monks. And so it was really cool. I thought I was going to be hungry. I, you know, I normally don't eat vegan food because I love meat, but I was so satisfied with the food. It was actually, really good. We couldn't even finish it, actually. Yeah, it was so good. You know, I was thinking, oh, well, I could be a monk to keep this. But I can't. <laughs> it's just exaggeration. But for that split second, I was like, oh, I could be a monk to enjoy this food. It was really delicious. Yeah, a lot of different variety of root vegetables. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we worry about Ryan might not be able to eat those because he's still little. So we went to the convenience store before that and then we got him some uh, onigiris. Yeah, but he did try some of the monk food. So yeah, I'm yeah, glad he, he tried. Was like it. Yeah, he, yeah, he liked it. But I really like our room, you know, because the first time I came in, I mean, I'm sorry for my ignorance, but I don't really know anything about the Japanese culture. So when I came into the room the first time, you know, I was like, where's the bed, <laughs> you know? Yeah, normally, <laughs> uh, you know, like when you go to a hotel, yeah. even in Japan, they have a bed. But, you know, this time we are staying at the temple. So you put the futon on the floor when you sleep. Yeah. So we get sleeping on the floor with the futon underneath. Uh, and uh, this, this probably was the first time Lauren uh, yes. you used yeah, the yeah. futon. Yeah, so you have to make your own futon like roll it out you know and sleep on it and then when you wake up the next day you have to roll it back up you know kind of like um, a sleeping bag yeah right? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah i think that's better i in my opinion because that way you can save the space right, yeah in the bed and it's just there all the time so uh but it was a little bit cold during the winter time i think i think the ac was ac there I don't remember. I just remember being freezing cold. Yeah, because uh, you know, this is the temple, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, it's not hotel. So that's the part of the experience. And I thought it was kind of interesting. Um, and they have the, uh, I think, uh, after a certain point, they start shining down the, uh, the lights too. So uh, we kind of slept early mm -hmm. and we had to wake up early too. Their morning was, uh, their breakfast time was super early too. Right. And we didn't go, but they had a morning like reading time also. Yeah. So at the temple, you know, when when you wake up, you can join the monks and and and, and uh, study the those um, the Buddhist Bible in the morning with them. Uh, we couldn't wake up early enough, so we kind of missed that. <laughs> Jet lag, okay, was <laughs> my excuse. <laughs> and it was fun walking around the neighborhood yeah, yeah. of that too. But yeah, we had a really fun, eventful first day. We did a lot. We see a lot. We ate a lot. <laughs> I think first day was packed with a lot yes. of stuff. And you know, after the first day, we stayed five more days in the that area. Not just Osaka, but we visited Kyoto, Shiga, Nara, all different places. And you know, we've been to different Japanese castles, temples. 
and the uh, cemetery. Yeah. It was all fun. Yes, my favorite temple is the one with the deer. What's the it's name? It's a, a, a Todaiji. It's in Nara a Prefecture. Yeah, it's very popular destination for tourists, actually, because they're full of deers, and it's little specially trained deers. And they're like pretty much everywhere. But right, they, yeah. you, it was different because uh, they always, uh, if you bow to them, and they bow back. Yes, they're so cute, and we can feed it food. Uh huh. Uh, on the street, people selling the, these crackers, special crackers for deers, and, and they love it. Ryan was feeding them. They started just gathering around Ryan. Yeah. They started kissing Ryan's Aww. face. Yeah, it was really fun. And then you also uh, at the Todaiji, I remember there is a pillar, a giant pillar. It's like probably this big. Uh -huh. and more. I can't even keep in a frame. <laughs> there's a giant pillar in the uh, temple, and there's a hole oh, at yeah. the bottom of it. And there is a uh, saying. Like, there, there is a, a custom at that temple. If you can go through that hole then you have a good luck of the year. Okay. And it's a very tiny hole. So if you're a bigger person or with a bigger built with muscular person, how, how are you supposed to get through? It's a little bit challenging. I don't think I, I was able to go right? through. <laughs> I, I remember you tried, but I wasn't sure if you were able to go through or not. I don't remember, okay, if I went through or not. Because if Wayne like, cannot go through, yeah. I don't think any grown-ups can go through that. Well... I guess we're gonna see the footage, okay? So we're gonna insert some B-roll footage and then you can see if I went through or not, okay? Hopefully I did. You know, I tried really hard, but I'm sure Ryan went through, right? Yeah, Ryan did that. <laughs> All right, here's a clip. Mommy's gonna try yeah. to go through the hole, guys. Okay, there's no way. <laughs> That was close. I thought I lost you there for a second. All right. So that was a really fun temple. Um, I I also like the other temple where... Yeah, that's my, my favorite. Yeah, yeah. It's the Mount he, uh, Hiezan's uh, temple. So this temple is built on top of a very high mountain, right? Uh, it was really cold and... It was a little bit challenging to get there, but once we get there, um, there was giant bell that you can um, make, make, you can ring. So uh, Ryan and I ring that bell on top of the mountain, and the monk there um, let us train meditation. So in a Japanese way of meditation is you sit down. Uh, and uh, you close your eyes and try to meditate with just no distraction, like no, no, like no thinking, no any other things besides just breathing. That's all you think about in your mind. Just breathing. Yeah, and, and usually monks can detect when you just start thinking something else, then they'll, they'll hit you with a stick. Not really hard. Yeah, yeah. It'd just be just, like, focus, yeah. focus. <laughs> just to remind you, yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. you have to focus. Um, so that's what we did. And Ryan, pre <laughs> Ryan, Ryan liked it too. Uh, so that's what we did. And that was my favorite. Um, that's, that's, uh, that temple I've never been, uh, been to. So uh, Todaiji, the one you like, I've yeah. been to uh, when oh, I was a little yeah. couple of times. But this Hiezan temple, it's, um, it's harder to go. So I've uh, never been to the, that place before. Right. And then we went to the, the cemetery. I was really confused because, again, I didn't grow up with Japanese history, so I didn't know who these commanders are or anybody. <laughs> it's funny because uh, when they explained to Luan and Ryan, oh, this is a, this commander, and oh, this is the this commander cemetery, and you know, since you didn't learn yeah, the history, yeah. you have no idea. But then all the other people, including myself, I was like, oh, no way, <laughs> it's him. Yeah. Uh, all, the, all the people, historical people that I learned through the textbook, uh, history textbook, were there. So I was super excited yeah. of seeing And this them. is a very famous cemetery, right? Like you could have a plot there if you wanted to. It's just really expensive, mm -hmm. right? Right. So not only those famous people, but the companies uh, invest money to put, I don't know. Yeah, it's a, their cemetery there. It's interesting. You, you, know, you think about cemetery, you think about person, right? Individual yeah. person uh, of, of grave. But then company... Would you... 
purchased a slot and then they put a um, object like representing the company. It, do you think it's more like a sponsor sort of thing or like an advertisement? Yeah, it's it's slot? definitely for a promotion. Yeah. So there is a giant national company uh, um, producing coffee, right? So their symmetry was the uh, uh, object of the uh, giant coffee cup. I thought it was pretty interesting yeah. too. I don't know if the uh, if they offer that place for the their employees oh, to, to if they right. don't have a I their see. own place. Yeah, I'm not sure, but I, I thought it was kind of interesting to see that it's really unique. So yeah, we visited so many different cemeteries, and also we went to a lot of different castles too. Japanese castles. We went to the one in Kyoto, and when we went to Nagoya, we went to also another uh, castle too. My favorite was Nagoya Castle. Is that the one with the the tour guide? The dressing up as yeah. commander. Yeah. So uh, when we went to Nagoya Castle, usually uh, there's a tour guide at each destination. They explain the history and, and all the fun uh, facts about the uh, the castle. And this Nagoya Castle, the tour guide was dressing up as a a commander like looks like a samurai and he was talking as if he was the commander i try to talk to him normally and he speak to me as a commander you know he was really playing the part really invested in his role and i really feel like it's as if i was there back in the day yeah. you know <laughs> and same thing when he speaks japanese too so he was talking to everybody in english and then also to, uh, speak to me spoke to me in, in japanese and then he was in that character still and I have to refer him with his commander name. So <laughs> I thought it was uh, interesting. And he had other samurai and ninja teams behind him too. And they, they showed us a little performance of the um, acrobatic performance with ninjas. Yeah. And this is my favorite picture of them together. It just looks like a movie poster you know yeah with them and also the background of the uh, nagoya castle and, yeah. and the, the weather was perfect so so forget karate kid this is more like ninja kid <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> i don't i don't know what i'm talking about okay my favorite thing about the whole trip was just seeing the ninjas you know we met them at so many different places we, we saw like the ninja village they were there in the ninja mansion but the coolest thing which ryan really enjoys seeing was the ninja performance so there are several of our favorite ninja performance shows and you know here's the one so this is the one sean was talking about here um they come out in like smoke you know as an entrance yeah, they also use like a special sound effects too, along with their like action. So I thought that was even even more cooler. Yeah. See, like using all different weapons and tools. Yeah, I think he's using sticks, and the other person using like a is like spear. I think so. Yeah, and I love this one because it's um. It's not just fighting. There's some scenes that's very comedic. <laughs> Let, let's just say they all have a uh, stabbing action to the uh, the fun places. And at the end of the show, they actually let Ryan throw real shuriken. The real one. So it actually, you know, when Ryan threw it, it went into the, the the wooden board. Right. So my second favorite performance was we went to this building, and Ryan didn't even know about this performance. This performance was kept a secret from him. So they're like, "Hey, Ryan, come upstairs." And he came upstairs, and a whole bunch of red ninjas came out. So a whole bunch of ninja came out. They did a really cool epic performance and I really love their costume because it's it, it looks very stylish you know like a modernized ninja look yeah unlike the, the one the performance before this one uh, they are more focusing on dancing like yeah. the choreography was really great like they're doing the acrobatic like jumping and 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 the spinning yeah look at that so they combined in like the ninja performance with the uh, the dance right and there's like a yo-yo master person too so you you'll see very soon like he's dressing up with a black costume instead of red and uh, he's a, a yo-yo performance 
He's gonna do the uh, uh, the performance first. Oh, yeah, he, he's holding the two yo-yos. Yeah. And then what we were really happy about, Ryan was really happy about, they presented him with the same ninja costume. It's really cool. It's it's not like those are typical um, like ninja costume you can buy at the uh, Halloween shop. It's very modernized. I think this is one of the kind in the world. Yeah, and he loved it so much. I think he looks so stylish, and they took a picture together. So that was really cool. Yeah, and the designer was very considerate. They know how Ryan's growing still. So yeah. they made the costume in a way it's adjustable. So even he grows up, he can still wear it. Right. So right now he's 10, right? It's been two years. He can still fit that costume. Yeah, he just wore it the other day and it fits him perfectly still. So that was really cool. Then my absolute favorite, I know I keep saying my favorite, but <laughs> this one is really, really, really cool. Okay, so the end, so the end, the finale of the our whole trip with this really epic ninja performance. So they kind of mix like a light show, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it looks like like a Las Vegas show, yes. right? Yes, they should really have this in Las Vegas. Yeah, just giving you guys an idea. If anybody managing their shows in Las Vegas, here it is. Yes. Look at that. Wow. Wow, Circus Olay can team up with ninjas. Right? Okay? Look at that. <laughs> so they have like an invisible screen in front of it. So it looks like he's disappearing and appearing, but those uh, special, visual special effect is on the screen and it is actual person behind that right. uh, see-through screen. Oh my gosh, that's amazing, right? I love it. So it, yeah, that. and if COVID wasn't, you know, if the pandemic wasn't there, then this would have been uh, performed during the Olympic, just so you guys know. Oh, really? I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah, so that was the whole plan. This whole Ninja project was kind of aligning with the uh, timing of the Olympic. Because, you know, that, that, around that time, there were a lot of tourists right. yeah, yeah. from the uh, overseas to come to Japan, and yeah. they would enjoy it. So oh, I was so bummed out yeah. when we found out that, it, you know, that Olympic was uh, no audience Olympic. Right. But I get it, you know, safety first, so, yeah. I know, you even had the idea of, like, inviting us to the Olympic, yeah. too, and then actually just be part of this uh, uh, performance. Right, this is... <sighs> <COVID>. <laughs> maybe next Olympic, <laughs> hopefully. I don't know, I don't think it's going to be in Japan, obviously, but maybe next Olympic, whoever country is hosting it. <laughs> I think the following Olympic uh -huh. is going to be in LA, right? Oh, is it? Yeah, it's going to be oh. in U.S. Well, we don't have to be on stage or anything. I just really want to go to the Olympics just to enjoy volleyball. You know, that's my favorite beach volleyball. Beach volleyball. <laughs> yes, I just want to see them perform and root on the USA team. But anyway, sidetrack here. Back to the Ninja Project. So the finale part was really, really cool. Look at that. Yeah. You know, I love how like, it just kind of emerged back into the one ninja. Yeah, we just recorded on our iPhone, but in our own eyes, it looked even cooler. Right? With the light up and everything. Oh, yeah. And then the last day, we also saw it was like the last ninja, right? Yeah, last grandmaster of a ninja. Apparently, there's only one grandmaster of a ninja in Japan. And his name is uh, uh, Professor Kawakami. He's also a teach. He's a professor at the university teaching the history and culture of a ninja. He, uh, we met uh, him in Japan, and also he explain us all the different ninja tools that right. they used to use back then it's and all of them are real one from the back uh, from long time ago so you can't just go around and calling yourself ninja right you have to like what are the you steps have to be assigned, yeah uh, you have to be assigned from the previous grandmaster and when we spoke with Kawakami, Mr. Kawakami, he mentioned the, uh, he's not planning to pass oh. on his uh, title to anybody uh, after him. So he's going to be, not only he's the last person, but he, it, that's it. He's not going to pass it on to anybody else. So he the really is the last, last ninja person, yeah. of Japan. Yeah. So that's really an honor to meet him. Yeah, and it, actually, he's also a YouTuber too. Just so you know, oh. I've seen many videos <laughs> uh, online that oh, really? he does. Yeah, showing the ninja tricks and, and the ninja trainings on the YouTube videos. Oh, do you want to be my sensei? I want to <laughs> learn some ninja moves. <laughs> I want to learn some ninja moves too. I want to be good at the hide and seek. Oh, oh yeah. I'm sure if you train as a ninja, I'm sure you you'll be good at hide and seek. Yeah, be stealthy. Uh -huh. My, one of my goal is not being seen by my family throughout the day, but I'm still at home. 
But that's what? a challenge. That's a new challenge. <laughs> How can we not see you? There's no way. All right, All challenge. Day. Challenge accepted. Accepted. <laughs> okay. I think I can do it. Okay. All right, guys. So that was a really cool ninja. We're just really happy that we finally get to share with you guys. And hopefully you guys um, who are watching these ninjas videos would um, enjoy it and learn something from it. Because, yeah, I get some idea, you yeah. know, when you go to Japan after the pandemic is over, you know, there's a lot of fun places there. So maybe get some ideas from this video yeah. and, uh, you know, right. plan your trip. Yeah, outside of Tokyo. There's lots of really cool places to see and enjoy. So, yeah, that is our video. And today, word of the day is, if you guys haven't guessed it, <laughs> Ninja. Ninja. Except it will just be in <laughs> Japanese because I actually don't know <laughs> what the word ninja is. The in word Vietnamese. the word ninja is Japanese. Yeah, the ninja. So we have different way of saying ninja in Japanese. One the most popular way is ninja, right? Uh -huh. Some some of you guys may know shinobi right. is also means ninja too. Sometimes we say that. But so, the more common way is ninja. Yeah, I, I'd say. Half and half. Oh, really? Amer yeah, people in the US often say ninja, but right. a lot of times in, in Japan we say shinobi. 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 Yeah, so when you watch Naruto, the anime, like, they often say shinobi. Uh, just, so it just means ninja. Is yeah. there a reason why there's two different words? Is it different um, region that says it differently? I don't know what's the, the story behind it, but I hear more shinobi than ninja. Oh, really? But it's uh, the, the word shinobi and ninja is use the same character too. Oh. Uh, means endurance. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. So they're not just assassin. Like a lot of people probably see ninja right. as assassin, but they're also spy too. I think more part of the ninja is a spy. Mm -hmm. uh, so they have to be stealthy. Right. They ha cannot be seen. And then they all, um, you know, their main part of their job is to, to gather the information secretly. Mm. So it's like a double seven. Right. Yeah, I like that. Except there's no, you know, uh, women involved. <laughs> there's no. Hey. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's back in the day, so it's different. There's no Bond girl. <laughs> but actually, there's a female shinobi too. Oh really? Yeah, uh, Kunoichi. So it's ninja, but it's a female different ninjas. Name. How do you say it? Uh, Kunoichi. Kunoichi. Yeah. Kunoichi. That's a female ninjas. So there's a, a tribe of the, the oh, female ninja. Interesting. Yeah. Is there any of those still? That I'm not sure. See, they, they talk about the last uh, uh, shinobi, but then what if there is a last right. kunoichi, the, the female ninja? Maybe. And they have different technique compared to the, oh, uh, really? the, the male ninja. So that would be interesting to learn the difference too. Oh, now I'm really curious. Yeah, got to do some research after this video. <laughs> So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy our secret ninja project that is no longer secret. Yay! Yay. <laughs> if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to more fun behind the scene content. And yeah, if you enjoy just getting to know us as a person too, subscribe. <laughs> We post videos every Saturday, hopefully, unless we are on trips or holiday break, you know? Yeah, let, let us know if you notice any difference between the stick with Kaji family, us, versus yeah. how we appear in Ryan's world. I feel like we're the same, but if you guys can tell the difference, let us know yeah. also in the comment. I'm curious. <laughs> All but right. this is how we normally talk. Do we? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I feel... I feel like I'm really shy when it comes to the camera, so... Lauren's, and, uh, no, Lauren's usually shy in front of the, the person she just met, but then after that point, she talks a lot. <laughs> so she just need to break that out of the shell first. Yeah. And after true. that, she's very outgoing. True, yeah. Yeah, if you like this video, give us a big thumbs up. Subscribe for more fun. Stick with Kaji. Hopefully, you guys have a fantastic day. Thank you so much for sticking with us throughout this whole episode, and hopefully... We'll see you in the future. For now, right. thank you for watching. Bye. Bye. See you next week. Bye, stickies.